I'd have everybody here this evening. We're going to cover the Babylonian captivity. I Googled it. I spelled it correctly. <clears throat> I learned a good bit from this study. I, I believe this is a period of uh, biblical history that I've uh, strayed away from. Or maybe whenever I get to the book of Jeremiah, I'm like, what is this guy talking about? He's a lunatic. That's what I thought in the past. But uh, I believe that I believe this study helped you. I've learned a lot about it. My wife's probably tired of hearing about it. But I felt like I learned so much. And I hope maybe something that we have said this evening will uh, <clears throat> help you as well. But at this point in our timeline, Judah's alone. I'm sure we remember that. We're moving into the Babylonian captivity. The historical summary is found in at the end of 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. And that to me, whenever I read that, that's like a nuts and bolts version. That's like a version that William would tell you. There's nothing cool about it. I'm just going to give you what you need. But what's interesting, what I found interesting, what got me excited was that whenever you read books like Habakkuk and you read books like Jeremiah, you read Lamentations and you read Ezekiel, it brings life to it. It's more personal. It's more deep because Jeremiah, for Jeremiah, this was his people that he's writing about. He's not just writing about some stories for some folks way over there that he doesn't know. This people that he knows. This people that he loves. This people that he's preached to. This people that he's cried about. And so this, uh, whenever you read it from that perspective, it just becomes uh, so much more interesting. <clears throat> but if Judah was, were, if they were still faithful, then this story would go on as before. God would protect His faithful people against any enemy, no matter how strong that they were. No matter if it was Pharaoh, Necho, and his people, or if it was Nebuchadnezzar and, and Babylon. Um, whoever it was, God could defeat. But the issue here is God had warned these people over and over and over again that they need to correct their ways. They need to stop um, worshiping idols. They need to be uh, God's people. They need to be the called out. But they aren't. So God's going to punish them. It's time for Judah to be punished. A summary of this, you can turn to Second or Second Kings chapter twenty-three. I'll put it on the, up here too. Second Kings twenty-three, or verse twenty-six and twenty-seven. <clears throat> It says, still the Lord did not turn from the bur burning of his great wrath by which his anger was kindled against Judah because all the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel and I will cast off this city that I have chosen, Jerusalem and the house of which I said my name shall be there. Also in 2 Chronicles 36 uh, verses 15 through 21. And once again, another summary of why we're being punished. It says, The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent persistently to them by His messengers because He had compassion on His people and on His dwelling place, but they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising His words and scoffing at the prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against His people until there was no remedy. Therefore he brought up against them the kings of the Chaldeans who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or age. He gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of the princes and all these he brought to Babylon. And they turned the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem and burned all its places with fire and destroyed all its precious vessels. He took into exile in Babylon those who had, been, <clears throat> who had escaped from the sword. And they became servants to him, to his sons, until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. And during the <clears throat> final years of the southern kingdom, Jeremiah served as, uh, I guess you could say, God's prosecuting attorney. But he also was pleading with the people. 
You know, whenever you plead with somebody to, to fix something, you, you are the prosecuting attorney because if they don't fix it, they know where they stand. And that's exactly what Jeremiah's case was. Jeremiah pleaded with these, his brothers and his sisters and these uh, people of Jerusalem to change their ways. And they did not listen. On occasion, they even tried to kill him. And in Jeremiah, we see a, a word picture of how the the righteous God has taken care of Judah, his wife, and she's committed harlotry. And he continues to take her back and she goes and she does it again and again and again. She's polluted the land and continued to do so until there was no remedy. I want you to look at Jeremiah with me. Jeremiah 25. <clears throat> it says, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem for 23 years, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, to this day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken persistently. Can you imagine that? 23 years? You're telling a group of people they're wrong and no one listens. No one listens. Your friends, your family, your countrymen, no one listens. You've neither listened nor inclined your ears to hear all that the Lord persistently sent you to all his servants, the prophets, saying, Turn now every one of you from his evil way and evil deeds and dwell upon the land the Lord has given to you and your fathers from the old and forever. Do not go after other gods to serve and to worship them or provoke me to anger with the work of your hands. Then I will do you no harm. Yet you have not listened to me, declares the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the work of your hands to your own harm. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not obeyed my words, behold, I will send all the tribes of the north, of the north, declares the Lord. And for Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants. And against all those, these surrounding nations, I will devote them to destruction and make them a horror a hissing and an everlasting desolation. Moreover, I will banish from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the grinding of the millstones, the light of the lamp. This whole land shall become a ruin and a waste, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Then after 70 years are completed, I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, declares the Lord. Making the land an everlasting waste, I will bring upon that land all the words that I have uttered against it. Everything written in this book which Jeremiah prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall make slaves even of them, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and the work of their hands. <clears throat> now there are, I mean, as you can see through his language, I, I hope that you go home. This is what happens to me every year. Okay? I'll just, just be flat honest with you. I'm usually honest anyway, but I'm just going to tell on myself to tell on myself. I get to reading through the Bible, and I get through the Old Testament, and I get to Jeremiah every stinking time. And I'm like, oh, man. But I'm so excited now that I know what's going on. Okay? And I hope that you can go home. When you get to Jeremiah, you know what's going on. You know why this guy sounds crazy. Because he loves these people. He preached for, to them for 23 years to make a change. Why? Because he didn't want them to die. Okay? He didn't want to see his people killed in the street. Would you? I don't care who, who in Lawrence County. I don't care how you've treated me bad in my life. I don't want to see you killed in the street. And he preached at it for 23 years. Over and over and over again. Yeah, he's a crazy madman. But it makes sense now. It's starting to make sense, and I hope it makes sense to you. So there are four kings of Judah in this particular uh, period that are removed or placed in power as puppet kings for either Egypt or Babylon during this time period. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna talk about the kings and then the wave of captivity that went with that because that's how it works in my brain. If it doesn't work that way in your brain, figure it out. But this is how it works for William. So, king number one, all right? The people made 
Jehoahaz. Now, if I say the name wrong, I was educated at Richland, and that's fine. But maybe you were somewhere else and you know how to say it. But Jehoahaz, also known as Shalem, this was Josiah's son. We remember King Josiah, the good guy. Well, this is Josiah's son. He was very evil. And the people of the land actually put Josiah into place. But the thing about Josiah is he undid everything that his father had done. All the great deeds that his father had done, this guy just, one of the commentaries I read said he evaporated it. We know what that means. That means it disappears. So all the work that daddy did, he destroyed. But he only reigned for three months. And then Pharaoh Necho forcefully removed him from office and put him in chains and he banished him. So from that point, Pharaoh selected a new king. So we're on king number two. And I tried to put a picture up there so that kids would understand who that is. We see lions and we see a person and there's a den. So I'm thinking Daniel, right? Okay, well, Daniel's in our first wave of captives. And that's who we're going to talk about here. And that happened under our second king, which is Elikim. Elikim. And um, Pharaoh Necho put Elikim in place and he changed his name. He wanted him to know who held the cards. So he said, that's not your name anymore. Your name is Jehoiakim. Okay? So he was like, good, my name is Jehoiakim. <clears throat> and it was the beginning of Jehoiakim's reign that Jeremiah was commanded to go and to preach in the courts of the Lord's house. So Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up. See, Pharaoh put this guy in place. Now Neb over here, the neighbor over here, he says, well, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go take him. I'm bigger than you are, Mr. Pharaoh. So <clears throat> Neb, the king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant for three years in 2 Kings chapter 24. And the beginning of Jehoiakim's servitude was 605 B.C., Three years later, Judah's king rebelled against Babylon. He refused to pay the tribute, which was pretty hefty. It was a whole lot of silver, uh, almost two and a half tons of silver, and then 70 pounds of gold was what he was supposed to pay. And he's like, I'm not paying that anymore. So Neb said, okay, I'll just take you then. And that's what Neb did. Um, so Nebuchadnezzar snuffed the rebellion out, and he took prisoners back to Babylon. Uh, Daniel... And his three friends, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, were part of the first wave of captives. And after Jehoiakim's death in 597 B.C., his 18-year-old son, Jehoiachin, became king. And he reigned for uh, three months. And he was very evil. And I want to read you uh, Daniel chapter 1 <clears throat> verses 1 through 7 and i did this so you would see hey these fit the bible fits together wow so daniel 1 uh, verses 1 through 7 in the third year of the reign of jehoiakim king of judah nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came to jerusalem and besieged it and the lord gave jehoiakim king of judah into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of god and he brought them to the land of shinar uh, to the house of god and the and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and nobility, youths without blemish. So, I mean, we can see already in reading this that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, these are choice people. I mean, if you're going to go capture land and bring people home, you want to bring the people home that are going to be good for you that are going to contribute to your society. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, use of, without blemish, of good appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them uh, the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of food that uh, the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel... Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names Daniel called Belshazzar, Hananiah called Shadrach, Mishael called Meshach, and Azariah called Abednego. And I just read that to hope, so hopefully you can piece that together in your mind. 
So after our second king is dethroned, we have uh, king number three, which is Jehoiachin. He's also called Konai or Jeconai. He only managed to reign for three months under Babylon. He was carted away in the second attack by Nebuchadnezzar, along with the middle class uh, people, the craftsmen, and the remainder of the upper class. In this attack, the treasures of Israel were carted off to Babylon, and this was the wave that took uh, Ezekiel. Let me, yeah, there he is. I put Ezekiel in the dry bones. I thought that was a cool picture. <clears throat> so this is where Ezekiel comes from. Ezekiel was in uh, this uh, second wave here. Uh, during Jehoiakim's reign five, in 597 B.C., King Nebuchadnezzar besieged the city of Jerusalem. Jehoiakim gave himself up. And we have the following report in 2 Kings 24, verses 11 through 14. The king of Babylon took, um, took him prisoner in the eighth year of his reign and carried off all the treasure of the house of the Lord and treasured the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold in the temple of the Lord, which Solomon, king of Israel, had made as the Lord had foretold. He carried away all Jerusalem and all the officials and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and the smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. <clears throat> and the second deportation of Jews uh, to Babylon included priest uh, Ezekiel, who later wrote the book uh, that bears his name. So that is our, our second wave of captives. We're at king number four. <clears throat> king number four is Zedekiah. And Zedekiah also called uh, Matani. And I want to read uh, 2 Chronicles uh, 36. And turn to verses 13 and 14. I don't, I don't have this slide up here. <clears throat> well, I'll just read all of it. 11 to 14. That's not that much. <clears throat> it says, Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God and did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar who had made him swear an oath by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against uh, turning to the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgressed more and more according to all the abominations of the nations and defiled the house of the Lord which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. So we see that the nation continues to get worse and worse and worse, and the leaders apparently get worse and worse and worse. The nation of Judah continued to exist 11 years under Babylonian rule of King Zedekiah. Uh, he was installed as a, a puppet king of Jerusalem by old Neb. But Zedekiah too rebelled. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem, and he laid siege to it. And they built siege works in uh, 2 Kings 25, 1 and 2. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. And, you know, we say the word siege. Sieges are terrible. I don't, I don't know what we know about war here. But sieges are terrible. You cut a city off from everything outside. And that means that you're living on whatever's in there. Whatever water you got, that's all you got. Whatever food you got, that's all you got. And things got really bad. And I'm going to read Lamentations to you in just uh, a few minutes so you kind of see that, uh, how, how bad things actually got. <clears throat> but Zedekiah, whenever the city was sieged, he had an opportunity to flee. Uh, he fled from the city. He was caught by old Neb. And King Neb, because uh, Zedekiah had disobeyed him, he, Neb was a ruthless fellow. He took Zedekiah, he killed his kids in front of him, and then he, cooked, he gouged his eyes out. So the last thing he saw was his kids. So Zedekiah was, uh, he was a terrible guy, but he was, uh, that's a poor ending. Uh, so Zedekiah fled the city, the city was besieged. <clears throat> Yeah, I want to come back to this verse. This is the verse that we started with. <clears throat> but it says, And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight. We're at our fourth king. 
We have our last wave of captives that are leaving. The only people that are left in um, uh, Jerusalem would just be guards and the poorest of the poor of the land and vine dressers. The city is in ruins. They burnt the temple. Uh, they've destroyed everything. They burnt uh, the big houses. Uh, I've got that in here too. Okay. <clears throat> so the Lord said, I'm going to remove Judah out of my sight. As I, I have removed Israel, I will cast off this city that I have chosen Jerusalem and the house which I said my name shall be there. The city fell in 586 B.C. Nebuchadnezzar burned the house of the Lord. Uh, he burned the king's house. All the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down. The temple symbolized God's presence among his people and it's supposed to remind them of their calling. And guess what? God had it destroyed. Because his people are no more. They didn't live up to their covenant relationship. They had a land of promise. And because of the way that they acted and what they did, it's no more. They're being carted off to captivity. <clears throat> All the army of the Chaldeans who were the captain of the guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. And the rest of the people who were left fled, uh, who were left in the city... And the deserters who had deserted to the king of Babylon deserted to the king of Babylon. Together with the rest of the multitude, Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, carried into exile. But the captain of the guard left some people uh, of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. So we have a big, empty, desolate city. That's just a, a map that shows... You know, the Assyrian captivity has already took place. You're looking at the green line down here. But that's the Babylonians. Um, that's the from Jerusalem to Babylon. Just so you have an idea of, of where Babylon is. <clears throat> whenever uh, people talk about it. But after the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, Gedeli was placed in charge as a governor in Judah. In 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 22, he was killed two months after his appointment, seven months after the fall of Jerusalem, causing many of the remaining Jews to flee to Egypt in fear of their lives. The group of refugees included the prophet Jeremiah, who was forced against his will to go to Egypt. Uh, Jerusalem right now is a desolate, quiet heap of a city. And now I'd like to read to you Lamentations chapter 5. <clears throat> Lamentations chapter 5. So I want you to remember Jeremiah wrote Lamentations and the book of Lamentations describes the funeral of a city. Whenever I was reading, that was probably the best way that I could, I could hear it described or somebody described it to me. It's a, it's a, Lamentations describes the funeral of a city. It's an emotional portrait of one... Um, of a city that was once proud. Jerusalem was a proud place, but it's been reduced to rubble. And Jeremiah expresses deep emotion of someone who's seen the slaughter of many of his people. Not just any people, his people. He's seen the slaughter of his people. The enslavement of others and the despair of those that are remaining in Jerusalem that have survived. Uh, starting in verse 1 of Lamentations chapter 5, it says, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Look and behold our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens and our houses to foreigners. We have become orphans and waifs and waifs is fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. They pursue at our heels. We labor and have no rest. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because the sword in the wilderness. Our skin is as, as hot as an oven because of the fever of the famine. They ravish the women in Zion, the maidens in the cities of Judah. Princes were hung up by their hands and elders were not respected. Young men ground at millstones, boys staggered under loads of wood, and elders have ceased gathering at the gate, and the young men from their music. 
The joy of our heart has ceased, our dance has turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head, woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this, our heart is faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim. Because of Mount Zion, which is desolate, with foxes walking about on it. You, O Lord, remain forever. Your throne from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time? Turn us back to you, O Lord. We will be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. So Lamentations is, is quite a book. <clears throat> but whenever you read that, um, you want to see a glimmer of hope. And Jeremiah gives us that. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 24. I want to read that to you and then I'll be quiet. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 24. And it, what this is, is it, it provides a glimmer of, of future hope. And you see that in these verses, you see that um, Judah's being punished. But you see that, that God has His plan still in the work is what's so cool about this passage or this group. It says, After Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had taken an exile from Jerusalem, Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, together with the officials of Judah, the craftsmen and the metal workers, and it brought them to Babylon. The Lord showed me this vision. Behold, two baskets of figs placed before the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like first ripe figs, but the other basket had very bad figs, so bad that they could not be eaten. And the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and the bad figs, very bad, so bad they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so I will regard as good the exiles from Judah whom I have sent away from this place to the land of the Chaldeans. I will set my eyes on them for good and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Thus says the Lord, like the bad figs, they are so bad they cannot be eaten. So will I treat Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials, the remnant of Jerusalem who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will make them a horror, a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a reproach, a byword, a taunt, and a curse in all the places where I shall drive them. And I will send sword and famine and pestilence upon them until they shall be utterly destroyed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. So even after Judah will face punishment, we're going to have 70 years of captivity. But God told Jeremiah in this um, story that they're going to come back. I'm not going to tear them down. They're not going to come back. And they're going to come after me with their whole heart. And that, that's what I want to, that's what I want us to leave with. You can do bad. Some of us have done bad. Some of us have sinned. Some of us have made terrible decisions in our life. But you can get past that. You can go past that. You can be, you can be better tomorrow than you were today. You just got to do it. You got to put in the work. Hopefully something said this evening was of use to you. Um, I hope if nothing else, maybe you'll go and you'll read these books with a little more... Uh, understanding uh, as I did and maybe you'll have a maybe you'll be excited about actually reading Jeremiah this time but uh, glad to <clears throat> hope that something was useful I really enjoyed the study and uh, we never close the service without offering invitation if you have never obeyed the gospel we can assist you with that if you're a child of God and you've, you've done some public nature that needs correcting we can we can help you with that too but please come as we stand and as we say Thanks for watching this video. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to miss another video from this channel. In order to avoid that, click on the red button down there, subscribe, and then click the bell icon. Not only will that alert you each time a new video is uploaded to the channel, it will also help spread the channel to other people's awareness. So go ahead, do it. Like right now, click on it.